Hey guys, Icon here from Voclia Music. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between traditional audio to MIDI conversion and Doubler's voice to MIDI. One of the best parts about Doubler is being able to sing and record a melodic idea you have as MIDI. And it is true that many DAWs offer this feature as well via audio to MIDI conversion. The first main difference is that with Doubler, you're able to perform the MIDI live, whereas in DAWs, you have to record the audio and then right click to click convert to MIDI. So in a live performance scenario, you can't use the audio to MIDI function available in DAWs. The other main difference is the fact that you can use your vocal expression to modulate the sound and modulate parameters and edit the sound while you're performing it. There are also additional tools that Doubler 2 provides, including chord presets, chord voicing types, spreading MIDI throughout different MIDI channels to be able to control multiple instruments at once, and we'll get into all of those shortly. But first, let's put Doubler's voice to MIDI detection to the test against Ableton's audio to MIDI. In Doubler 2, we're using the C minor scale, and we've set stickiness to high to make it harder to transition from note to note, which leads to a bit more accurate singing. And we're using a guitar instrument in Ableton, soft tremolo it's called, and here's how it sounds. What we're going to do is we're going to record the audio while singing with Doubler 2 and then convert that to MIDI using Ableton's audio to MIDI. But we're also going to record Doubler 2's MIDI in real time so that at the end we can compare the two. I'm just record arming the audio and the guitar. One, two. A couple of overlapping notes there but let's compare so I'm just gonna right click convert melody to new MIDI track let's see so as you can see the audio to MIDI conversion it picked up the rhythm of the notes, but a lot of the notes are wrong because for audio to MIDI conversion to work properly, you have to sing really well and you have to catch the correct pitches all the time. But with Doubler, we have the help of our pitch wheel and locking to a scale that allow us to sing the notes in the scale correctly. If we play both at the same time. One more test, this time with a bass, and this time with no pad in the background to help us out while singing. The next sound I'm going to use is an FM bass, it's a preset of the ultra analog synth, and here's how it sounds. I'll increase the filter a bit. So I'll try to sing in a bass line now, uh, and again record my audio so I can use Ableton's audio to MIDI as well. A little bit all over the place. <laughs> I'm just going to right click, convert melody to MIDI again. I'll just take that MIDI, place it on the piano. Yeah, 
This time it's even harder because the bass notes are lower and it was extra hard for audio to MIDI to pick up my pitch. But one thing that you can do to compensate for this is using the scale MIDI devices or there are plugins like Scalar that help you keep everything in key. For example, I know we're using a C minor scale, so I put the C minor scale preset. Now it'll sound maybe a bit better. Let's see if it's still the same as the bass line. So as you can hear, even though we corrected all the notes to a scale and the correct scale that we were using with the bass line, there are still a lot of wrong notes and notes that are all over the place only because audio to MIDI is very, very sensitive. And if you even sing a little off the correct pitch, then the notes are going to be all over the place. Let's listen to Doubler's version again. Sounds much better after quantizing. <laughs> okay. Audio to MIDI is a great feature and it's great for getting down ideas, but as you can see, it can be far from accurate and you may lose a lot of time editing a lot of notes. Whereas with Doubler, sometimes you can perform it flawlessly with practice or you'll only have to edit one or two notes that overlap or small errors like that. Now let's explore how you can use Doubler 2 to modulate your sounds with expression. We'll use the same guitar patch we started with. and we'll map one of its parameters to be controlled by our A-Val, for example. This is a feature that has moved over from Doubler 1 where we can map vowels to control parameters in your DAW. So I'll hit Command M, click this tremolo amount. Let's hear what it does first. It adds a nice western -y kind of tremolo effect to the guitar. So Command M to map that, clicked. And then you come to the Assign tab, and then click Map on whichever vowel you want to map it to. So I'm going to use the A vowel. So now when I stress the syllable while performing, we're going to get the tremolo effect. And another benefit about Doubler 2 is the new MIDI ranges introduced. You can control the sensitivity with the faders on the left. So if there's a shorter distance between max and min, then the envelope will open to its max value faster. So the minute I make even the slightest A sound, it opens all the way. But if I increase it, it'll be more gradual. You can also control the range of its output. So if you don't want the tremolo effect to go all the way to its max, you can bring it down to maybe 80 here. See, you can see here it's only opening till 60% now, whereas at max, we're going all the way up to 100. I want it so that the minute I make an ah sound, the tremolo starts. So I'm going to keep the distance between min and max low here. So I'm getting a dynamic performance by modulating the parameters of the sound I'm using while singing live. We'll go back to the bass patch we use now and apply the same, not tremolo, but a different effect. We have the filter frequency here we can map. And we've already mapped it to the eval, so I'll enable the eval here. Go to Doubler. So it's opening way too much and losing the characteristic of the bass, so I'm just gonna go lower that range. Keep 
That was too low. I'm going to lower the octave as well. So you can modulate the filter while singing live. So. You can get really creative with vowels by mapping all of them to different parameters. You can map some of them to two parameters. And this will give you sounds and textures that you can only achieve using your voice. Let's use the vowels once more, but this time with a sequence patch uh, from the Synth Master Synth. I'll disable the vowels for now, just to see how it sounds alone. So, very intense patch. We definitely want to bring that filter down. So, we mapped the filter cutoff to the envelope, actually. So, I'll enable all of those again. When I sing closer to the mic, the filter will open more. And when I sing farther from the mic and have less of an input, the filter cutoff will shut. So let's see how that works in real time. add one more layer of control, we map the resonance to the O vowel. So I'll enable that. So we're able to control how high and low the resonance goes. And we also set a range for it here because too high of a resonance can get very screechy. Also going to set a limit for the filter because it's going very high. I'm going to increase the resonance slightly more. So when I stress the O sound, the resonance is going to get higher, as you can see here from the curve. The sound's characteristic really changes when the resonance goes up. One of our favorite new features in Doubler 2 is of course the chords tab where you can get really creative with chord progressions, assigning different chords to single notes. We could have that F note that we sing play another chord, for example. We could even have it play an A sharp major, for example. The root note bass line gives us a low version of the note we're singing, so F, I'll just disable that. Switch the chord again. So you can experiment with all these chord choices. We have some recommended chords here and all possible chords that you can add are in this drop down list here. And you can also see the notes in the chords to the left here. So we're using the spread voicing here, by the way, which spreads the keys out along octaves, but we could also use the block or cluster mode. So here's spread again. Block. I'll add the root note again. get some really nice chord progressions here. Something really cool that you can do with chords in Doubler 2 is spread them across different instruments. So you can have your root note, a bass playing your root note, for example, with another instrument like a pad, strings, or anything else playing the chords. And to set that up, you come to the Assign tab. Pitch is where your root note is going to in terms of MIDI channel. So it's going to the first MIDI channel. Chords is going to the second MIDI channel. You can, of course, change this. And here in Ableton, in the MIDI channels, you can see you're able to select which MIDI channel. After selecting Doubler 2, you can select which MIDI channel you receive the MIDI from. Lots of DAWs offer this option, of course. We're going to have our root node go to this bass. And we're going to have our chords go to this pad. 
I'm just going to demonstrate this with the strings and the bass. I pressed record and for the bass I just got the root note I was singing which is the bass line and I got the chords separately. So this is really useful for creating stacked parts. While we were singing the pad we also had its oscillator mix here uh, mapped to the E vowel so here's how that sounds. This is a Waves Codex synth, by the way, it has some amazing presets, definitely recommend it. The envelope is really key for getting the maximum amount of expression out of your voice while performing with Doubler 2. For example, we have another orchestral video that you should definitely check out, but we have some strings here using Spitfire's Epic Strings instrument. And this is a long preset. I'll shut off the chords and just added a higher octave and lower octave using Ableton's chord MIDI device. What's really cool about the ENV parameter is that with a lot of instruments, it automatically maps itself to the dynamics control. For example, all Spitfire instruments have a modulation dynamics control. And if you sing louder into the microphone, the strings will get louder, but they'll do so naturally because that's how they recorded it in the studio while preparing the library, for example. I think we can increase the output range. So you can get some very expressive melodies using ENV and Dynamics parameters available in plugins. The last expressive feature we're going to look at is Pitch Bend. And we get into this in more detail in other videos, but in Doubler 2, you can switch pitch bend modes depending on how you're singing. And there's also a chords bend option, so you can have the chord MIDI bend as well as the root note MIDI. And we'll leave it at 12, because 12 is ideal for going all the way up and down an octave. And all we have to do is make sure that our synth's pitch bend range also matches the pitch bend range we set in Doubler 2, of course. So we'll go to this patch. It's a synth master patch, trumpet lead. Here's how it sounds without pitch bend. We'll add pitch bend to that. And in synth master, The pitch bend range is usually here in the top corner. So it's 12 for layer one, make sure it's 12 for layer two as well. Okay, so that should work. And now we'll enable pitch bend in doubler two. One thing to keep in mind while singing in pitch bend is that your, the first note you sing will be quantized to the scale with the notes selected here. But then when you're bending your harmony, there's no more quantizing. So you have to practice singing well and you have to sing in key or else you'll get melodies that are out of harmony. definitely more difficult to sing with pitch bend but we recommend putting in the practice and improving with it because you'll get some really amazing expressive melodies. 
Thanks for watching. We're really excited to see how people are using Doubler 2. If you've recorded any music or videos, be sure to send them over. We'd love to check them out. And if you have any questions about this video or anything Doubler 2 related, definitely drop a comment in the comments section and we'll get back to you. For more information about Doubler 2, head to voclia.com and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.